In the 1930s, seismologists faced a big mystery about the inner structure of the Earth. Today, on what would have been Danish seismologist Inge Lehmann's 127th birthday, it's a good time to appreciate how, using limited data and rudimentary technology, she brilliantly arrived at the answer. At the time, scientists believed the Earth's core was made of molten rock surrounded by a solid mantle, then the crust. This model explained why when big earthquakes occurred, certain types of seismic waves weren't detected in particularly places on the other side of the world. The waves were bent when they traveled through liquid materials. As the core bent them, it created a shadow zone where no waves could be felt. But after a 1929 earthquake near New Zealand, Lehman and others noticed something odd. Some of these waves could be faintly detected by seismometers in Europe. If the core was entirely molten, this shouldn't have been possible. While studying this data, Lehman came to a realization that would revolutionize our understanding of the Earth. At the core center, she figured out, is a ball of solid material. When an earthquake occurs, it unleashes two main types of seismic waves. P waves, which arrive first and involve a wave of compression rolling through the ground, followed by S waves, in which the ground shakes back and forth. In 1914, German-American seismologist Benno Guttenberg, studying data collected by early seismometers placed around the world, which showed that S waves were only detected up to a distance of about 104 degrees. Meanwhile, P waves also abruptly stopped at 104 degrees, but then started back up again at about 140 degrees, leaving a so-called shadow zone with no waves at all in between. Guttenberg correctly reasoned that all this was due to the existence of a molten semi-liquid core. S-waves can't travel through the liquids at all, which is why they are not seen past 104 degrees. P-waves are slightly bent when they move through liquids, so the molten core was effectively focusing them like a lens, causing more waves to appear past 140 degrees, but none to appear between 104 and 140 degrees. But there was a problem. With the model, some faint P waves were indeed detected between 104 and 140 degrees. For years, seismologists mostly assumed they were a result of faulty seismometers. Lehman, however, was mystified by them, especially after a 1929 earthquake that occurred in New Zealand and sent very distinct P waves to the improved network of seismometers she had helped install in Europe. Over the next few years, she closely analyzed this and other data sets. In the pre-digital age, her cousin later recalled, Lehman would record the data on pieces of cardboard torn from boxes of oatmeal and sometimes sat surrounded by them in her garden, puzzling over the numbers. Eventually, she had an idea. A solid inner core inside the soft molten outer core, which would reflect some P waves, causing them to end up in the shadow zone. Her subsequent calculations, published in a 1936 paper simply titled P, as P waves were then called, confirmed the idea. I then placed a smaller core inside the first core and let the velocity in it be larger so that a reflection would occur when the rays through the larger core met it, she wrote years later. The existence of a small solid core in the innermost part of the earth was seen to result in waves emerging at distances where it had not been possible to predict their presence. The simple, elegant solution was correct. It was quickly adopted by other seismologists over the next few years. Other data collected in the decade since has confirmed Lehman's hypothesis and told us more about the size and composition of the inner core. Eventually, in 1971, Lehman was awarded the William Bowie Medal, the highest award in geophysics. At the award ceremony, she was introduced as a master of a black art for which no amount of computerizing is likely to be a complete substitute. A fitting tribute for a scientist who once discovered an inner core 3,200 miles beneath her feet using data scrawled on pieces of oatmeal boxes.